And please, lastly, do not use any stock photos or low quality imagery, because if you do, I think you should be, you should be well, put straight to jail. GM and welcome to another The PPC Mastery podcast episode. And in this solo episode, I'm going to continue where I have left off in my previous solo episode. In my previous solo episode, I spoke about how to craft a irresistible offer to obtain your dream clients by focusing on their dream outcome. And in this episode, I want to translate that irresistible offer that you have cr uh, created to a high converting landing page for lead gen and SaaS businesses. So in this episode, we're going to talk about how you can, well, build high converting landing pages for lead gen clients by using your irresistible offer. So let's first start off with what a landing page actually is. So a landing page is often the first page and often the only page people see when they click your ad. It's a page that works independently of your website and is often not being indexed by Google and is not being well included inside of the navigation of your website. So it is really hard and almost close to impossible to find your landing page if people do not click on one of your promotional ads. So your landing page is focused on one really clear primary objective and it should be focused on one primary objective only and his job is to shorten the buyer's journey from click to conversion so people that come on your landing page often are are often from a high intent so they search for a specific keyword where they contain specific words that is showing transactional or commercial intent and you can capitalize on that by sending that specific potential client directly to your online salesperson, which is your landing page. So it really creates a clear path to your primary conversion goal for the users that are really, really, really warm and close to converting. You can, only, you can also use landing pages for colder traffic. So instead of sending people over to your landing page that focuses on a specific marketing offer, you can also send people over to a landing page that, well, basically, offers them a specific lead magnet, for example, a ebook or a white paper or a online demo that they can watch or maybe a coupon code that you can, that they can use for, well, your web shop for e-com purposes, for example. So you can also use landing pages for colder traffic. But normally, landing pages are being created for the warmer traffic and it is ideal for Google Ads search campaigns, in my opinion. So what are the main benefits of landing pages and why are they so important to have. So first, it creates a seamless experience for the visitor. So once a visitor or a potential client looks for a specific solution inside of Google search, uh, you know the intent and you know the problem and you know what they are looking for. So if people were to search for a marketing automation software solution, you know the intent is really high and they are close to converting. If you are going to show them the correct information on your correct landing page. And your landing page is basically a single page that focuses on one primary object, ob objective, one primary call to action that goes straight to the possible solution. So next to that, it also results in a message match with the ad they clicked on. So let's say you address certain benefits or maybe even certain uh, features inside of your search ad or maybe even a display ad or a YouTube ad. You can repeat that message on your, well, Taylor landing page that creates a sort of harmony and that creates a message match. So your user, your potential client knows they have um, they have landed on the right website that is completely relevant to the solution they are possibly looking for. Next to that, it makes A-B testing more straightforward. So having incorpor incorporating landing pages to your, to your campaigns and to your website basically enables you to uh, test more frequently and, and set up more tests 
easily. So if you were to test on your own website, you are quite limited to, for example, the resources you have, for example, the developer that is available right now, or the layout that you have to, that you have to take into account. When you work with landing pages, you can build your landing page yourself often by using a drag and drop tool like Unbounce or Lead Pages or Convert Flow. There are numerous tools out there that you can that you can use. So you can easily set up tests and easily change around certain copy, change around certain elements, change out certain forms, etc. And that enables you to quickly set up tests and to enable well conversion rate optimization quite easily. And lastly, the most important thing of having landing pages is to improve your campaign performances. So particularly looking at Google Ads, because that's what we like to do at PPC Mastery. Looking at Google Ads, you can really, really improve your conversion rates by a lot, allowing you to hit your uh, ROI targets, but also allowing you to scale massively. Because if you are able to improve your conversion rates by tens or sometimes even hundreds of percents well, looking at the conversion rates, that will enable your CPCs to skyrocket and will enable your ads to, to, well, to enter new auctions that you couldn't enter before. Also, the ad rank on your most important keywords or search terms are really going to improve and that will result in way more traffic for basically a lower CPA or a better ROAS if you are looking at it that way and you're using value-based bidding. So it really allows you to scale massively beyond the stuff that you're doing right now. So that's why I always, always, always um, suggest people to incorporate landing page optimization um, when they are, well, when they're advertising for lead gen or SaaS clients. Next to your conversion rates, you can also improve your quality scores a lot, looking at the landing page experience. And this will improve your ad rank as well, because your ad rank consists of your CPC times the quality score at auction level. So looking at creating your landing page, where do you start? So I like to start with a wireframe. I really like to incorporate this in my day-to-day -day work nowadays, since Google Ads is being heavily automated. That frees, frees up time to incorporate, well, landing page optimization, landing page testing. So when I start out creating a landing page or a proposal for a landing page that needs to be designed by a, def by a, a graphic web designer, I always like to start out with a wireframe. And by starting off with a wireframe, it basically allows you to visualize your landing page early on. And it allows you to prioritize what's most important on the page uh, by looking at the informational information hierarchy. And that's something that we will address in the next couple of minutes. The information hierarchy is really important because it basically tells you what the potential client needs to know first in order to make the decision and what information needs to be addressed and prioritized and what information can be left aside that is, isn't really being important and uh, is only going to distract people from, the, from completing your call to action. So that's really important. It also creates a structure of your landing page that focuses on the primary conversion goal. So when you start wireframing your landing page, you can easily see it come together and that will well that will make sure to that your landing page has a great structure where it also focuses on your primary object objectives and your primary call to actions lastly it is easier to align your copy and design so what people do wrong a lot and i see this happening at a lot of online marketing agencies as well they are like hey we need a new landing page or we even need a new website and they start briefing their web designer this is something that we uh, wanted to look this is something that we want to achieve but basically the web designer has to well craft your landing page and it is going to be led by your web designer so oftentimes people do not have their copy written out they don't have a clear structure in place and it is all well decided by the web designer well what the informational hierarchy is going to be and how your page is being uh, going to look at, to look at so what you would like to do is you want your designer to be creative 
And you, as a, well, Google Ads specialist or as a online marketer, should desi decide on the contents of the page and the informational hierarchy and the visual hierarchy of the page. So you are in the lead of how the landing page is going to look, quote unquote, how it is, how it is going to be structured. And your web designer is the one that is going to make it look great and is the one that makes sure that it aligns with your brand guidelines, so to say. So you want to put all of the various people involved on the same page as you are. So that is something you can do by taking matters into own hands and by starting out with a wireframe and thinking about the informational and physical hierarchy yourself. So I like to use a tool called Balsamic for my wireframing. It is a really, really, really simple offline tool that is basically a program on your uh, laptop or computer. It is an easy program where you can basically sketch your um, landing page and sketch out your even websites. Uh, it, I, I think that is this is one of the most convenient tools out there. It is really, really st stupid simple. There are also other tools out there like Figma or mockups or, well, other online wireframing tools that are a little bit more detailed and, well, well and professionally looking. But I think when you start to incorporate really detailed tools for your wireframing purposes, you start to design real soon. And that's something that should be led by your web designer, in my opinion, because you should think about the informational hierarchy and the visual hierarchy and the contents of the page. And your web designer should be, well, focused on the design. So that's why I like to use a really horrific looking wireframing tool, Balsamic with a Q on the uh, end. And that has worked for me in the past. And it still does right now. So before you start off with a wireframe, you actually need a irresistible offer first. So in the previous podcast episode, the solo one that I did, I spoke about how to craft irresistible offers by looking at the dream outcome of your dream clients by using a framework called Dream. So if you haven't watched or listened to that specific podcast episode, make sure to give it a listen because I think there are some good golden nuggets inside of there that you can use to craft irresistible offers. So before you start wireframing, you should have that in place. You should know the answers on questions like, what is the dream outcome of your dream client? What big problems could your solution solve? Or is your solution going to solve? What does your product or service offer people? What value do they get? What makes your offer unique? What sets you apart from others? What are the, what are the potential alternatives? And how do you make sure that you are the better solution? What could prevent people from accepting your offer immediately right now? And why should people take action now? And what happens if they don't? So what happens if they don't take action right now? Well, they're still going to suffer and they're still going to, well, suffer from the, their big problems and challenges. So that's something you need first before you can think about the informational hierarchy of your landing page. So if you haven't craft your irresistible offer, make sure to give the episode a listen. So let's talk about the importance of the informational hierarchy. So the informational hierarchy is the practice of laying out your information so that it answers all of your potential clients' questions in a logical order. So let me repeat that. So informational hierarchy is the practice of laying out your information so that it answers all of your prospects' questions in a logical order. Information hierarchy helps you to find the balance and priority of all of the information that you need to, well, put on your landing page in order to close the deal, to make people to take action and to complete your call to action. You do not want to push too much information at once because this will result in information overload. But on the other side, you do not want to leave information behind because this will mean that you will start to become vague and your sales pitch will become incomplete. So people think there are important details missing and because they haven't seen the important details, they aren't able to, well, complete the call to action because they might still have doubts. They might still have some objections. They, there might still be some barriers that you need to address first. So you cannot be 
incomplete, but you should not be over complete as well because the more information you have that is unnecessary the more copy people have to go through and well this results in information overload so the importance of information hierarchy is making sure to include the most essential information on your landing page in a logical order so if you're going to address this topic and if you're going to look at your information hierarchy, there are a couple of questions that you can ask yourself. And this is different for all of the businesses out there. The first question is, what information is most critical to be included on the page? What information should be included and what information should not be included? What drives people away from taking, uh, completing the call to action? And what is unnecessary information? How can you well, throw out unnecessary information or replace that part of information with actual information or copy that addresses certain objections or that addresses certain barriers or that addresses certain benefits of your solution. What is the awareness level of the potential buyer? So by looking at the channel and traffic temperature, what is the awareness level um, of the user? Are they product aware? Are they solution aware? Are they completely unaware? So you have to think about what kind of traffic you are going to be sending over to your landing page because this will mean, one, what your offer is going to uh, look like and two, how you're going to pitch your offer and three, how your call to action is going to, well, be inserted. I'm still forgetting a lot of more points, but we are going to <laughs> address on that in the next couple of slides. So the call to traffic the more content you often need to include and the warmer the traffic, the more of a transactional or commercial intent the user has, the less content you need to basically let the, the potential customer complete your call to action. You also have to think about what information should we prioritize and what information should we deprioritize and what information should we put above the fold. And that is the thing that people can see without having to scroll on their mobile devices or on, the, on their desktop or laptop devices. The above default region is the most important region that you should well focus at because the headline, the summary of your offer, the call to action and the imagery are basically the most impactful of well, if people are going to scroll on your page looking for further benefits and further information, or if they're going to decide and bounce because your offer is unclear and they're like, what the heck is going on here? I have no idea what I'm doing here. Let's return to the Google search results page and let's click and try another search ad. So really, really focus on all of this stuff that is above the fold. So over here, I have a little example of a uh, landing page of Tailmat, if I pronounce that correctly. If you're looking at the YouTube video of this podcast episode, you're able to see the landing page. If you're listening to this podcast episode, I will make sure to run you through the landing page. So the landing page basically consists of several elements, like a headline, a subheadline, a call to action, several benefits, and then several content blocks below the benefit part. Uh, but when looking at the landing page, they are telling you as a potential customer in their headline, exclusive travel nursing jobs, and in the subtitle, earn up to $60 per hour with Tilmet travel nur nursing. And then a call to action, get started now. And in the call to action, you're able to, um, well, to, to insert your full name, your phone number and your email address, and you can apply straight away. But looking at this page, what the heck are travel nursing jobs? So that's the first question I have. So um, I think Tillmatch should better address what they mean with travel nursing jobs. What is it and what can you do with it? And without looking any further on the page, looking below the fold, what are, are their unique value propositions? So why 
is their offer irresistible and why should I go with Tailmat? So if you take a look once again at the headline and the sub headline in the call to action, you're like, well, what makes you different from all of the others? Why should I leave my contact details behind? What problems are you going to solve for me? And why are you better than any alternatives? And if if I have a, an answer to all of those questions, what are the social proofs of of you doing actually a great job? So can you tell me what your how your customers are rating you? Can you tell me about certain case studies of, of about how people well earned towards multiple thousands of dollars per month by applying to a travel nursing jobs at Tillmat. So just by looking at the above the fold part of this landing page, you're like, well, I have no idea what's going on here. And you're asking me to convert too soon. You're asking me to leave my uh, contact details uh, behind without knowing what your unique value proposition is what your uh, irresistible offer should be, why I should go with you instead of alternatives. I do not even know my own problems and challenges. So uh, how are you going to solve them? So a lot is going on in the wrong way just by looking at this specific landing page. So this is just one of the many examples that you can find across the web. I always see it as a sport. To, to basically look at the landing page of lead gen advertisers and basically spot what can be done differently and what can be improved. So the next time when you hit an ad and you land on a specific page, ask yourself all of these questions. So ask yourself, what is the dream outcome? What are my biggest problems and how are they going to solve them? What value do I get as a customer? What makes your offer unique? And what sets you apart from all of the competitors? How can you explain that I should accept the offer immediately? And how do you tackle my potential objections or barriers that I have? Uh, what happens if I do not take action right now? So it's a great exercise to do if you land on a specific lead page. Uh, lead landing page uh, yourself uh, by asking you these questions from your own perspective as a potential client. So generally, you can use the components of your irresistible offer for your information hierarchy. So over here, I have created a sketch of the elements that you can use for your informational hierarchy. And these can be also translated to certain visual hierarchy elements. And we will address that in the next couple of slides. So the first part is about dream outcome. What is the dream outcome of your dream client? Number two, big problems. What big problems does your solution solve? Number three, value. What does your product or service offer people? What value do they get? And what, what are the core benefits of your solution? Number four, uniqueness. What makes your offer unique? What sets you apart from others and potential other relevant alternatives? Five, objections. What could prevent people from accepting your offer immediately, right now? Six, call to action. Why should people take action right now? And what happens if they don't? And seven, credibility. Why should people trust you? How can they be sure you are the best solution? And well, why should you be the one that should be trusted? So to recap, these are the most important information hierarchy elements that you should address on your landing page. Dream outcome, big problems and solution, value, uniqueness, objections, call to action, credibility. So those are the seven core components. And if you were to address them all on your landing page, and if you were to prioritize your information hierarchy correctly, then you will have a good converting landing page already. Okay, let's continue to the visual hierarchy. So once you have your informational hierarchy in place, you can translate all of your informational hierarchy elements to certain page elements. And you have to ensure the most important elements on the page are visually prioritized. There are some essential principles that you can use in order to, well, ace your visual hierarchy. So let me explain what the potential elements are. So the first element is size. Uh, you can use size 
to, to better address certain important elements. So important elements should be way bigger than less important elements. So let's take a look at your call to action. Your call to action should be, well, relatively big compared to your compared to other elements on the page because it is a really important element on the page for people to take action right now same applies to for example your headline your headline should be way bigger than your regular copy because your headline should be the the part that captures people's attention and intrigues them to continue to read the rest of the contents of your page uh, you can also use white space as a visual hierarchy element. So important elements should be easily found and you should make it more appealing for people to, well, to take, to take a look at the uh, specific important element. And you can do so by making sure there's enough white space around important elements, like a call to action, a form to complete, certain imagery, certain testimonials that you want to highlight and you want to address. So make sure to always use white space to give important elements the, the, the place they need and make them more appealing. The next visual hierarchy element is direction. So you can include visual cues to guide users to specific elements or specific parts of your page. So sometimes you see website uh, websites like Balsamic uh, using visual cues by using a background color in the form of a arrow pointing down to, to visually cue people to continue reading and continue heading over to the next element. You can also use specific arrows or imagery of people looking to a specific site on the page. So the attention is being focused on certain other elements on the page. So direction is also a thing that you can do. Next up is placement. You should always arrange elements in a logical way. And you have to take into account that we as humans like to scan our pages in Z or F shaped patterns. So if you mark out a Z or a F, the F of Ferdinand, then you should always make sure that your page is easily scannable and the placement of your contents and your elements are, well, put together in the correct way so people can easily scan your content. And lastly, we have color and contrast. So you can use attention grabbing colors and contrasts to, well, to better address certain elements and to make them pop. So think about contrasting call to action butter, button colors or think about background colors that are contrasting to, to other sections of your page, making it, well, easier to see the hierarchy of the page. So these are all elements and tactics you can use to, to improve on your visual hierarchy. So let's continue with hierarchy elements. So what are certain elements that you can use besides the technique, tactics or the techniques in order to address all of the most important parts of your page, the informational hierarchy? So the first part is your headline. So you want to lead with a value-driven headline that is tied to your client's dream outcome. There are multiple frameworks that you can use in order to craft an ideal and captivating headline online. I'm not going to touch on those frame frameworks and examples right now. I think I will address them in a future uh, podcast episode. Yeah, future ep episode. But you should always lead with a value-driven headline that really, really draws the attention of the user. Next, you want to create a offer summary. So you want to pitch your offer in a short summary and you can also see this as a subheadline, so to say. So I like to see it as a summary of the offer. And this is where you want to lead with the problem of the potential client. And you want to explain how your offer will solve their problems and will result in their dream outcome. You can then also translate the core benefits of your offer into certain bullet points. So it is easy to scan and it is really easy to see how you as a, well, vendor or a business is going to solve 
their pains and their problems right now and this should all be included above the fold so it should really be easy to scan and people should 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 recognize them in in all of the points that you make and it should intrigue them to scan the remaining parts of the contents of your landing page as well because well they should be they should be addressed and they should be hey yeah this is exactly my problem and oh that solution sounds interesting i want to learn more about that so next up is the call to action the call to action is a thing that your potential clients should do and why they should take action right now your call to action should be actionable so it, sh it should start with a word like get or download or sign up or well words that are actionable and it should be tied to your irresistible offer so if you were to sell a google ads course for example then you can create a call to action like get more get more insightful about google shopping right now or today or increase your google ads knowledge in four hours or download our google ads audit template and never and never waste any money on certain certain leaks inside of your google ads account from from today so these are just some top of mind examples i think if i were to sit down to create these examples they will become way better but it should be tied to your irresistible offer and it should be actionable you want to place your call to action above the fold and you want to make it sticky in your navigation so if people are scrolling down on the landing page to see all of the other potential interesting parts that you have to tell then they should always see the primary objective and the call to action that they can and should complete to get the solution they're looking for so you want to repeat your call to action <clears throat> also after every two and three sections so you want to address your call to action above the fold so people know what they should do if they want a solution but you should also repeat your call to action on <clears throat> logical ways and logical parts on your landing page next up is object objections so you also want to answer frequently asked questions and counter potential barriers and objections so often people have a lot of objections and they need to be sold on specific parts of the offer before they they're going to take action so you should really think about the stuff that might prevent people from taking action right now and you should counter all of the potential objections and you can do so by well throwing in guarantees or explaining why you are the better alternative than a competitor that they might have tried prior to to this potential solution and why they're going to succeed with you and why you are going to guarantee that and why you're also going to guarantee a well why you're also going to guarantee a money back period or maybe an other guarantee that you put in to basically counter the objection even further so that's really important to address and use inside of a visual element as well you also want to include engaging media so you want to show images or videos of the desired end result the desired dream outcome so please 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 stay away from any stock photography because well i really have to throw up if i see any stock images I always bounce as a Google Ads user or a Google user myself uh, because you have to, well, I think put in the work to craft images yourself and craft videos yourself that show your uh, knowledge and show the desired end result that I'm looking for. And it also shows me that you are a real business with real humans and that you are not a, well, 16 year old legion advertiser sitting at the sitting in the basement of your well mom and dad sending over my lead to potential other vendors that are going to pay for that specific lead so i want to show real faces real people and real end results so put in the work 
and make sure to include engaging media that is relevant to your irresistible offer. Do not include any media that does not add up and does not add to your story and doesn't and isn't going to well increase the conversion rate. So just leave out all of the irrelevant images, leave out all of the irrelevant business uh, videos, make sure that all of the imagery is relevant and tied to the potential dream outcome of your potential dream client. Next up, you want to include credibility. You want to include social proof, but also proof that gives you credibility and that builds trust. And you can do this in uh, several ways. You can do this by including testimonials in certain sections. These can be in video and in text. This is something that we really, really, really focus on at PPC Mastery. So if you were to look at one of our product pages, you will see that we put in a lot of work in order to gather as many as testimonials of real people with real stories as possible. Ideally, we want to have as many as videos as possible because these really, really build trust and these cannot be faked. You also want to make sure that you address the name of the person that left a review. You want to address the uh, title, the function title, uh, if it makes sense and if it is B2B related. Uh, you want to make sure that people can verify that it, is, that it is in fact a real human and that you have not just come up with this random testimonial and it is it has been faked. I think more than half of all of the testimonials online are easily faked. And you want to see that all of the testimonials are real. You can do so by you can do so by making it able for people to verify the sources. So include a LinkedIn uh, link to their profile pictures. Include a, a link to a specific case on side of your website. You might even link them to a Facebook profile so people can verify that they are not fake. You also want to include vote photos so faces of the people that um, left a review or left a testimonial because if you don't people will become well people will will do not trust the testimonials right away so always ask if you can use a profile picture of a person that leaves a testimonial so those are all testimonials what you can also do inside of the testimonials is to not just randomly list them inside of your landing page, but you can combine them with countering certain objective objections or focusing on certain benefits. So you can look and go through your testimonials, all of the ones that you have gathered, and basically prioritize certain testimonials and link them to certain benefits dream outcomes or even use them to counter certain objections on your page so that's also a great way to leverage on all of the testimonials that you have right now so do not list them randomly inside of a carousel or an embed for example but make sure to put in the work to link them to specific information and specific well elements of your page you can also think about trust symbols so if you are a Google Ads agency, you might want to include a logo of a Google partner, or you might want to include a Trustpilot badge so people know that all of the reviews you have gathered are real. At least most of them are if you're using a third-party uh, review platform like Trustpilot. You can also use customer logos and you want to use well-known brands. You do not want to use brands that people do not know because, well, <laughs> if they are your uh, bakery next to the corner, well, people will not care. And they were like, okay, so I do not know who this customer is. Look small. I am bigger. Maybe they're not, they're not used to working for bigger clients or bigger brands. So maybe this agency might not be the best fit for me. So always make sure to include relevant customer logos of well-known brands that people know, if you have them, of course. And lastly, for credibility, you can include awards and, achie and achievements. So if you take a look at the uh, landing page of true clicks for example they include a lot of awards that they have won uh, with their ppc software 
for example, the Global Search Awards of the last couple of years. And you can also include certain case studies. So case studies are the proof that the stuff you preach or the stuff you promise are actually, are actually real and you are able to, 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 well, complete on those promises. So if you are once again a Google Ads specialist, you want to list out case studies where you show the real business growth that you have facilitated for a specific client or multiple clients or a specific case study where you have increased the efficiency by 200% without sacrificing volume, for example. So make sure to include case studies as well. You can combine all of this with persuasive techniques to let people complete your call to action. So people want to take action right now. So you can use urgency, scarcity, and guarantees inside of all of the visually, visual hierarchy elements to make sure to uh, double down on all of the elements that you have already included. So explain why, sh why people should take action right now and how it hurts them if they don't. So you can do this by uh, utilizing micro copy below your call to action bottoms, for example. Uh, you can add real scarcity around the offer. So for example, in a couple of weeks, we're going to launch our, our hub, the PPC hub, which is a really a limited available membership community for senior and media Google S specialists that want to be the best version, version of themselves. So we are going to limit the available spots to 200 spots only, and that will make it scarce. And we're also going to be limiting the offer. So the offer will, will only be online for a couple of weeks before we take it down and we will close the membership community once again to, to make sure that everyone gets the experience inside of the PPC hub that they deserve. So that's the urgency part of it. So that's why people should take action right now. Otherwise, they will uh, miss out on the offer, which is a great deal, I think, or they will miss out because there are no more spots left. And you can also add in guarantees where you can eliminate any risks with aggressive guarantees. So think about how you can make your offer so irresistible that people will feel stupid saying no. And that's a quote from Alex Omozi that I really like. And it all comes down to oftentimes the dream outcome combined with really aggressive guarantees. For example, I guarantee you that you will grow 10% in top line revenue in the upcoming three months. And if you don't, I will work for free and you do not have to pay any of the invoices that we have sent out in the first couple of three months working together. So that is like an irresistible offer with a really aggressive guarantee where you will work for free until that specific goal has been reached. Of course, you should be able to live up to it. That's a topic, that's a discussion for a whole other discussion. It's also content for a different podcast episode, I think, but make sure to make your irresistible offer, well, irresistible. And lastly, the visual hierarchy element that you want to include is a manage expectation element. So you want to explain the process and what happens next when people decide to take action. So what happens if they apply for the PPC hub? What happens after? Will they be, will they be able to, to sign up and log in immediately? Or will it take a couple of days before we actually launch and they get access? What happens if I were to ask for a quotation to, to redesign my garden? Will I be contacted in four hours within working day hours? And how soon are, am I going to, how soon can they start with the gardening, gardening redesign process? So you want to manage expectations so people know what happens next. So that's it. Let me recap. So the most important high impact visual hierarchy elements are the headline, the offer summary, the call to action that you can repeat on multiple parts inside of your page, objections, engaging media, credibility, persuasion techniques, 
and setting expectations. So those are the high impact visual hierarchy elements that you do not want to, well, skip in my opinion. So there are a couple of areas where you can basically F up. <laughs> I'm not going to pronounce the word because I'm, <laughs> I'm scared this video will be taken down. So the first thing is when you F up is when you ignore the rule of one or having an attention rate ratio that is higher than one on one. And the attention ratio is a rule made by Oli Gartner, which is a really well, famous uh, conversion optimization specialist. I haven't seen a lot from him lately, but a couple of years ago, he was like my go-to guy to learn more about landing page optimization and CRO. So what he means with a attention ratio that is higher than one-on-one, -on -one, or what he means by the rule of one, is having more than one primary objective and one more than one primary call to action to complete. So for example, if you were to include your navigation uh, bar or your header and your footer, people have, well, a lot of more ways to go and a lot of more things to, to complete. So they can go to your homepage, they can go to your about us page, they can go to your contact page, they can even see your privacy policy page will give a fuck and <laughs> there pronounce the word <laughs> fuck <laughs> they can even take a look at your terms and conditions they can go to other services or other products that they do not care about right now and you do not want to have the op give people the possibility and opportunity to well navigate away from the core objective and the core objection the, the core call to action you want them to complete right now. So always make sure to, to eliminate all of the distractions and to only have one specific goal and one specific call to action only. You do not want to keep your standard navigation because this will result in conversion leaks. That's how uh, only Gartner also pronounced it. I think that's a great way to put it. So all of the other links that well get people get people away from your core call to action is basically a leak in your conversion funnel you do not want to overload people with information uh, you want to be concise and you want to be focused you do not want to fail to optimize for mobile so when creating your wireframe when creating your design of your landing page you want to create mobile first designs if they make sense but if you are B2C focused, I think more than 70% of all of your website visitors will be coming from mobile nowadays. If you are more B2B focused, for example, a B2B SaaS company, then you could still be more desktop focused by looking at the percentage of your traffic. So where does it come from? You want to tie your call to action to your offer. And you do not want to use generic call to actions that are like sign up now or download now or get quotation. So you want to be really specific and you want to tie your call to action to your irresistible offer. You want to start with a attention grabbing word and you do not want your call to action to be that long because otherwise it will uh, look hideous on your mobile phones. You also want to be testing and iterating all of your versions from the very first start. So your first landing page version should never be your last. So make sure to always test and make iterations of the landing page that you have crafted. And please, lastly, do not use any stock photos or low quality imagery, because if you do, I think you should be, you should be well, put straight to jail. So <laughs> that's my honest opinion. So never, never, never use stock photos for your landing pages because otherwise they will not be high converting. They will result in low converting landing pages and people will throw up. So lastly, I want to end this podcast episode by uh, saying that you do not want to underestimate your above the fold section because this is where you create the most impact. So if you were to if you have to double down on specific parts of your landing page because of, for example, time constraints or other limited resources, make sure to have a kick-ass high converting 
intriguing above the fold section where you really focus on a compelling headline, a compelling offer summary that summarizes the problem and your solution and translate your benefits into several bullet points and include a specific call to action that is tied to your irresistible offer. So that's all I want to say for this podcast episode. I hope you liked it. In a future podcast episode, I think I will zoom in on the specific persuasion persuasion techniques that you can use, including certain examples. So one tip that I want to give you If you are listening this in your car or at home or in the gym, well, I try to make these solo episodes visually uh, compelling. So it is more interesting to watch and it's more interesting to follow. So I can also insert specific visually examples like I did for the landing page of Tailmat of or Talemat in the very beginning of this podcast. So make sure to check out our YouTube channel PPC Mastery as well. So you do not miss out on all of those visually uh, appealing presentations that I try to give. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of your day and hope to see you around soon in a future episode. Ciao, ciao.